Bonjour. Nous sommes le groupe bilingüe progressif en français et nous allons parler sur les scientifiques qui ont fait des avancées dans le domaine de la santé. Hippocrate était un docteur de la Grèce antique, considéré comme la père de la médecine occidentale. Hippocrate a écrit sur les moyens de guérir les plaies, l'interconnexion entre les organes, les moyens de diagnostiquer les pathologies et même sur la façon dont les malades pouvaient être évités en dormant bien. Et moi, je s'amène une phase de l'exercice, ce qui est aujourd'hui absolument confirmé. Anton van Levenhoek, 1653 à 1723, était un scientifique hollandais. Au XVIIe siècle, il a introduit les relations nécessaires au microscope, lesquelles ont permis de grands avances dans les connaissances des cellules. Aussi, il a découvert pour la première fois la bactérie et les vers. Anton était un précurseur de la biologie expérimentale, de la biologie cellulaire et de la microbiologie. Louis Pasteur, né le 27 décembre 1822 à Dol, il était un chimiste, physicien, mathématicien et bactériologiste français qui a créé le vaccin contre la rouge en 1885. Il réalisa ainsi l'une des plus grandes avances de l'histoire de la médecine. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, scientifique allemand, 1845-1923. Il a découvert les rayons X. Avec cette découverte, il a fait des progrès en médecine et il a sauvé de nombreuses vies. Et... Sigmund Freud est considéré le père de la physique analyse et de l'une des plus grandes figures intellectuelles du XXe siècle. Il est une des pionniers dans l'étude de la structure de l'esprit et de son fonctionnement. Il ne s'est pas concentré uniquement sur le physique. Il a abordé les problèmes mentaux et il a publié ses théories sur les sommeil, les moi et l'inconscient. Alexander Fleming est un médecin et scientifique britannique. Il est né le 6 août 1881. En 1920, Fleming a découvert à Sintermen la pénicilline alors qu'il travaillait sur les cultures bactériennes. Il est parti en vacances eh, quand il est revenu sur un chandillon on est recouvert par un champignon de la souche pénicilline notatum qui a détruit la bactérie. Grâce à cela, L'air antibiotique de la mission a commencé. Rosalind Franklin est un scientifique britannique. En 1951, elle utilise notamment les techniques de diffractométrie au rayon X afin de déterminer les structures du carbone. Grâce au rayon X, Rosalind Franklin détermine les structures de l'Adam. En distinguant principalement les deux hélices, nominons A et B. Quatre ans après sa mort, ses collègues ont reçu le prix Nobel, mais, mais ils n'ont pas valorisé le travail de Franklin. Marie-François, Marie-Cine aussi, est une virologue française. En 1923, elle annonce la identification du nouveau rétrovirus humain responsable du SIDA. En 1928, elle initie de nombreux travaux sur le déterminant de lutte et du virus dans les pathogènes du VIH et s'implique dans des programmes pour la recherche du vaccin. Le tel était ciblé sur les mécanismes de protection contre l'infection, puis à l'origine des VIH ou des contrôles du SIDA, en particulier à niveau de l'immunité innée. Elle a reçu plus de 10 distinctions internationales du à l'heure de sa carrière.
dans les prises congénement nouvelles de physiologie ou médecine avec Luc Montarni. Elle est également titulaire du titre de docteur honoris causa de nombreuses universités. Adita Rini, c'est une chercheuse en santé publique en Indonésie. En août 2020, elle a réussi à réduire le nombre de cas de dents. En Indonésie, dans les grandes villes, cette maladie touchait 400 millions de personnes par an. Elle a libéré des muscles modifiés pour empêcher la transmission des de virus. Le nombre de cas a diminué à 60%. Roslan Torassi est une scientifique, médecin, femme de secteur, enseignante et leader mondial dans le secteur de la santé. Elle est cofondatrice de la Société de Biotechnologie, BioNT. Elle préside également l'Association pour l'immunothérapie du cancer à Moyen. Elle a obtenu son doctorat à la Faculté de médecine de l'Université de Lassa avec une thèse sur le traitement immunothérapeutique des cellules cancéreuses. Elle a travaillé sur le développement des vaccins sans anticancéros individualisés à base d'ARN messagère. Pendant la pandémie de COVID-19, Tourassi a orienté son activité dans la recherche d'un vaccin contre le SARS-CoV-2, le virus responsable du COVID-19, en partenariat avec Epticia. Le 11 novembre 2020, elle et son entreprise ont développé le premier vaccin approuvé contre COVID-19 pour l'ARN a été utilisé avec une efficacité de 90%. Merci pour votre attention. Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to talk about scientists. We will talk specifically about Mary Clark King who held this girl the gene that caused breast cancer and Emil Fischer, who discovered Barbital. Mary Claire King was born on September 27, 1946. She is the daughter of Harvey King and Clarice King. Over time, she became an expert of human genetics. She graduated from Carleton College in mathematics at the age of 19. After that, she studied at the University of California Place her passion for the area of genetic speaking. She did a doctorate under the direction by renowned biochemist and genetic Alan Wilson, 1934-1991. Wilson and Mary Claire King begin a study on the molecular similarities between humans and chimpanzees using comparative protein analysis. The results show that humans and chimpanzees are 90-90% generically identical. In 1990, King showed that the gene located on chromosome 17, called BRCA1, was prone to mutations that affect their cancer, especially breast and ovarian cancer. This discovery changed what we know about breast cancer, although it was received with clemency. It is currently very helpful for the study of human genetics. She collaborated with other scientists to identify the genetic causes of various diseases. In addition to cancer, in 1995, she began her career as a teacher at the American Cancer Society, where she continues to teach and research. On October 9, 1852, Hermann Emil Fischer was born. In 1902, he won a Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his research on substances of biological interest, purines and sugar, carbohydrates. was a German chemist that discovered the amino acid structure of proteins. His family had a successful business, so his parents wanted him to be part of it. But after Emil finished high school, he only lasted two years in the business as he showed no interest on it. So he decided to study university. He enrolled at the University of Bonn and did an undergraduate stay at the University of Strasbourg. In 1976, he discovered the phenohydrazine, 
a compound that will be very useful later and that causes chronic eczema. Then, between 1882 and 1906, he studied on purines and sugars, the research for which he is most widely recognized. This work showed several substances, very little known until then, such as adenine, sanatine, and substances excreted by animals as uric acid and guanine, transforming the knowledge about these compounds. First World War, he was responsible for organizing German chemical production, but on July 15, 1919, he committed suicide. The circumstances that prompt this action are not clear, but possibly is the death of two of his children during the war, as well as the bowel cancer he suffered from. After Fischer died, the Emil Fischer Memorial Medal was instructed by the German Chemical Society. Edward Jenner was an English physician and scientist who pioneered the smallpox vaccine, the world's first vaccine. He is often called the father of immunology, and his work is said to have solved more lives than any other man's work. The people of Hinston thought him crazy because he had started testing the smallpox vaccine with a healthy eight-year-old boy named James Phipps, but he recovered it within a week and they began testing the vaccine with more people. He was also called as a poet sex due to the passion he felt for writing expressing his feelings through this facet of literature. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen. He was a German physicist who produced and discovered new type of radiation. History. In Austria, a newspaper report that Röntgen had discovered a new type of radiation in the wavelengths corresponding to now called X-rays, and the unit of measurement for radiation exposure established in 1928 is also named in his honor. Contribution was awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Medicine by the University of Wasborg. After he discovered, he was awarded with the first Nobel Prize in Physics. Röntgen donated the award. He refused to register any patents related to his discovery by a radical reason. He doesn't want the race to bear his name. Hippocrates. He was a Greek physician. He was seen as the greatest doctor of all. He specialized in observing and studying the human body, reject of his contemporaries who considered that this disease was caused by superstition that people create. He said that a whole body had to be treated as a whole and not in parts. He also is famous for his ideas about separation between medicine and his concern for the duties of physicians led him to develop a note of medical ethics. Reject of his contemporaries who considered that the disease was caused by superstition that people create. Joseph Lister, 1827, one of the pioneers in the use of the microscope and made one of the surgical procedures. Discovery. In March 1867, the surgeon Joseph Lister had the brilliant idea of combining Semmelweis' successful proposal with the recently acquired knowledge of Louis Pasteur. Biography Joseph studied at University College London, initially studying botany, and graduating in 1847. He then studied medicine. About Lister published an article in The Lancet in which he proposed the bacterial origin of, of infection in wounds and methods to fight it, the use of phenol.
René Laine. He was born in 1781. He was a French doctor and inventor of the stethoscope. He traveled to Paris to the Faculty of Medicine. He was a student of Corbesat, Napoleon's personal physician. He said to have been inspired by children, playing with a tree bench, scratching the wood, and heard the amplified sound. Line arrived in the French Revolution, when his house was at the head of the place Dauphin, where execution were carried out daily. He invented the stethoscope and the description of its use for diagnosis. Under the limitation of semiological pictures of the heart and lung disease. Alexander Fleming was born in Ayrshire, Scotland on August 6, 1881 and studied medicine, serving as a physician during the First World War. Through research and experimentation, Fleming discovered a bacteria destroying mold which he would call penicillin in 1928, paving the way for the use of antibiotics in modern healthcare. Louis Pasteur, French chemist and microbiologist who was one of the most important founders of medical microbiology. He pioneered the study of molecular asymmetry, discovered that microorganisms cause fermentation and disease, originated the process of pasteurization, saved the beer, wine and silk industries in France and develop vaccines against anthrax and rabies. Edward Jenner was an English physician and scientist who pioneered the smallpox vaccine, the worst first vaccine. Sigmund Freud, born on May 6, 1856, and died on September 23 in 1929 in London, England. He was an Austrian neurologist and the founder of psychoanalysis. Freud's article on psychoanalysis appeared in the 13th edition of Encyclopedia Britannica. Joseph Lister, English physician and surgeon, considered the founder of antisesam and preventive medicine. Joseph Lister came from a Quaker family and was the son of a wine merchant with a great ability for microscopy. This led Lester to design his own achromatic microscope in 1813, thus contributing to the beginning of modern microscopy. He also studied art in London and became interested in medicine. He obtained the title of surgeon in 1852. He subsequently worked in Edinburgh, Glasgow and London. In 1877 he was appointed professor at King's College. In 1854 the British physician John Snow linked contaminated water from a bomb to the vector of the Corella outbreak that occurred in London on Broad Street. He made an important contribution to medicine by calculating infection rates and estimating the probability of infection. He also was an English physician who pioneered epidemiology to the point of being considered the father of modern epidemiology. Galen de Pergamum was a Greek physician and philosopher responsible for discoveries that would lay the foundations of human medicine and anatomy. 
he discovered that the arteries have the function of transporting blood and nourishing the body that urine is generated in the kidneys and even identified some of the cranial nerves the nerves that arise from the brain and are involved in sensory perception the control of the facial muscles and the action of different glands such as the lacrimal and salivary glands Paracelsus was a Swiss doctor who, despite his controversial figure, completely revolutionized medicine by creating the first drugs using the chemical properties of different natural substances to cure diseases. René Leinach He was the author of the invention of the stethoscope. He claimed that listening to the internal sound of the body could give a lot of information about the state of health of the person. And although at first the scientific community didn't support him, as it was too revolutionary an idea in a short time, he demonstrated that auscultation was useful for diagnosing lung diseases and cardiac pathologies. Uh, etc. Louis Pasteur was a French chemist, physicist, mathematician, and bacteriologist born on December 27, 1822, in Dole a French community. In his adolescence, he didn't show any kind of interest or special attitude towards any scientific branch. Rather, his first interest was towards painting. Over time, he became known for discovering optical isometry and harm theory, but his greatest contribution was pasteurization. What does it consist of? Well, previously it was believed that fermentation was a chemical process without the intervention of any organisms, but he discovered that it was actually two organisms responsible for this phenomenon, which caused different reactions in the process. He created a new method to eliminate microorganisms that can degrade wine, beer and milk. And in this way, pasteurization was created, a process that ensures the production of multiple food products. He passed away on September 28, 1895, at the age of 72. This was due to cardiorespiratory arrest. Without a doubt, he is part of the great scientist. Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman to receive a medical degree. She was born on February 3, 1821, in the United Kingdom. Elizabeth became interested in medicine after a friend of hers died and confessed that she probably would have suffered less if there were female doctors. She applied for at least 15 universities, and it was until Geneva Medical College that they accepted her application thinking it was a joke. She graduated with honors in 1949 and went to continue her studies in France and England. After seeking employment and being rejected, she founded with her sister a medical school only for women. Alexander Fleming was a bacteriologist. He was born in August 6, 1981, in the United Kingdom. He is known from his career in penciling. It was in September 1928 that Fleming studied mutation in stuffy local colonies and found that one of the cultures has been actually contaminated by a microorganism from the outside air. A fungus later identified as Penicillin mutatum. He determined that and this microorganism made a substance that could dissolve bacteria. He called this substance penicillin. 
after the Fenzuan mode that proved Fleming and other conducted a series of experiments over the two, next two decades. Using penicillin, the tail look from the mold cultures that showed its ability to destroy infectious bacteria. Currently, something that has helped society too much is the invention by Edward Jenner, the vaccine. Something that even in the current pandemic has been a great help. Edward Jenner, born on May 17, 1749, was a boy who always was interested in nature, focused on things that normally went unnoticed. After his higher education, he returned to his town as a family doctor. The world was going through smallpox, a deadly disease that killed thousands of people. However, it had a variation, cowpox, a less little one, which would remain me in those who milk cows but didn't die. They only had pustles on his hands, but when cured, they were immune to smallpox. Prisoning for a moment, he decided to inject pus from the hand of a milkmaid to a child, who, thanks to that, he recovered from cowpox. After that, they inject him human smallpox, but it doesn't have any effect, so the first vacuum was created. It is something that seems surreal, but it wasn't. But without this, many people will have lost their lives. Edward Jenner will be remembered as someone that saved their lives of a multitude.